In this video we'll take a look at a piece of classic Heathkit test equipment, the IT27 transistor diode checker. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, consumer electronics started to make use of transistors, eventually replacing vacuum tubes for most applications. As compared to today, early transistors were less reliable and quite expensive. Some early radios even mounted the transistors in sockets to facilitate replacement. Like tube testers, there was a demand by repair technicians and hobbyists to be able to test transistors, hence the need for a transistor tester. Heathkit made a number of transistor testers over the years at different price points and level of features. Some were simple go-no-go -go testers that indicated if the device was good or bad and maybe some indication of gain or leakage on a small meter. This included the models IT10, IT27, and IT3127. They were offered starting in 1961 with the IT10 at a price of $6.95. Also offered was a mid-range series of testers that could perform more measurements and offered a larger meter. These included the IT18 and IT3118 which sold for $25 to $35 when new. More sophisticated testers could measure gain and leakage more accurately. These started with the IM30 in 1961 which sold for $54.88 and which was restyled as the IM36 in 1967. Heathkit even sold a curve tracer which, when attached to an oscilloscope, graphically showed transistor characteristics. The IT27 was a go-no-go -no -go type transistor tester which could also test diodes and was described in catalogs as a transistor diode tester. It was made from 1967 to 1978 and typically sold in the U.S. for $6.95. It replaced the earlier IT10 model, which was introduced in 1961, and was replaced by the IT3127, which was sold until 1981. All three models were essentially identical, differing only slightly in the styling and color of case. Taking inflation into account, the retail price of $6.95 in 1967 is equivalent to about 54 US dollars in 2020. The IT27 is designed to check transistors for leakage and gain and to check diodes for forward and reverse current. It's housed in a rugged metal case and runs on battery power using two C cells. It can test NPN and PNP bipolar transistors for leakage, gain, shorts and opens and check diodes for forward and reverse current. It can also be used as a continuity tester. Two current ranges are provided to test both low and high power transistors. The transistor under test can be connected using a universal socket or for larger power transistors without leads using three test leads with alligator clips. It cannot test transistors in circuit. Unlike more expensive testers, it only provided a simple go-no-go -go test with no measurement of transistor parameters. It would be useful for weeding out devices that were dead due to opens, shorts, or lack of gain. It can't test other types of transistors such as field effect or unit junction. It was sold only as a kit and could be assembled within a couple of hours by someone with only limited experience in electronics thanks to the detailed assembly manual. The top of the unit has three slide switches for selecting the test functions. A universal socket accepts most small transistors. A small meter indicates values from 0 to 10. Three banana jacks allow plugging in the supplied test leads for connecting to the transistor or diode under test. Basic transistor testing is simple. You set the type to NPN or PNP based on the known type of transistor under test. For low power signal transistors you set power to low or set it to high for high power transistors which typically have larger cases. The low power range tests the device at a collector current of about 3 milliamps and the high range about 175 milliamps. You then insert the transistor leads into the socket or attach the leads using the three test leads and alligator clips. It's necessary to know the pinout of the transistor leads which can be obtained from the data sheet for the device. The small meter will now indicate the amount of leakage current through the transistor. This is typically from zero to a quarter of full scale, anything higher indicating an unacceptably high leakage value. A full scale reading here would indicate a shorted device. 
Moving the momentary switch from the leakage to gain position should register an increase in the meter reading if the device is operating correctly. The change will vary depending on the type of device under test, but should be at least one meter division of increase for a good device. A reading of zero in both the leakage and gain positions would indicate an open device. The manual suggests filling out a chart with readings for known good transistors of different types and referring to this for future testing. Let's look at a few common transistors I had in hand. This ubiquitous 2N2222NPN transistor has negligible leakage and the meter moved to 6 for the gain test. The plastic case equivalent 2N2222A also checks out good with a gain reading of 7. This is a 2N3904, a very common NPN transistor, which also checks good. The equivalent PNP transistor, a 2N3906, requires changing the switch to the PNP position. It tests good as well. Here's a higher power transistor which I need to test using the test leads. I can test it using the high current level and it tests good as well. For testing diodes, you put the high-low switch in the D position and connect the emitter and collector test leads to the diode under test, referring to the polarity indicated on the front of the checker. With the forward reverse switch in the forward position, the meter should indicate some deflection, which will vary depending on the type of diode under test. When in the reverse position, the meter reading should decrease for a good diode. If the diode is shorted, there will be no difference in the readings when the switch is moved, typically showing full scale. A zero reading in both positions indicates an open diode. Here are some examples of testing low power silicon and germanium diodes. You can also use the unit to test LEDs, in which case the LED will light up when forward biased. The unit can even test copper oxide and selenium rectifiers like this one. These have a lower forward resistance and hence a lower forward current reading. The unit can be used as a continuity tester by using the emitter and collector leads. A full scale reading indicates continuity and no reading indicates open. Also in this mode, the battery level can be checked. With the leads shorted, the meter should read at least 75% of full scale if the batteries are adequate. Note that the unit has no power switch. With no transistor or diode attached, there's no current drawn from the battery. It's recommended to disconnect the test leads when not in use to avoid them shorting and draining the battery. Let's take a look inside.
There's no active circuitry inside. It just contains battery clips, switches, socket, plugs, and the small meter. All wiring is point to point. The C batteries would be installed in the bottom of the case. I bought this unit from a local seller on Kijiji in November of 2020. I believe he was the original purchaser and builder, having bought it in the late 1960s or early 1970s as a student. It came with the original manual. This is a simple kit and the manual is a half size type, but still contains over 30 pages of detailed assembly instructions, theory of operation, and usage information. The manual is dated 1967. It's interesting that the manual assumes that the reader is more familiar with tubes than transistors and starts by explaining the circuit operation based on tube behavior. The unit's been modified to operate from a 3-volt AC adapter, branded Sears, rather than batteries. He added an 1 8 inch jack on the back for this. Also added inside was a diode to protect against reverse power supply polarity and a small filter capacitor. The clips from the original battery holders have been disconnected and removed. The batteries may have leaked at one point as there is some corrosion. The case is a little beat up, but it is after all over 50 years old. One of the banana jacks was broken, so I glued a rubber grommet around it to make it cosmetically closer to the original. I also replaced some screws that were unmatched or missing. Other than that and some basic cleaning, no other restoration was needed and the unit operated correctly. Today, dedicated transistor testers are not commonly used pieces of test equipment, primarily because transistors are reliable, very low cost, and most modern designs are based on integrated circuits and not discrete transistors. I mentioned that transistors were quite expensive in the early 1960s, selling for a few dollars each, which would be somewhere around $30 today. For under $5, you can now buy 100 transistors of common types like the 2N2222 or 2N3904 from sources like eBay. You can perform transistor go-no-go -go tests using an ohmmeter, although it's a little tedious to go through all the test lead combinations. If you have a low-cost digital multimeter, you might find that it includes a simple transistor test function, like this one. For such a very simple circuit, the IT27 is quite effective at performing a simple go-no-go -go test of transistors and diodes to weed out bad units. For examples of more sophisticated transistor testers, see my YouTube videos on the Heathkit IM36 and IT121.